Ulcerative ileitis, more commonly known as wet tail, is a serious intestinal disease that may be developed by any hamster at any age. It most commonly affects Syrian hamsters, though in a few rare cases it has been known to affect dwarf and Chinese hamsters too. Proliferative ileitis is a stress-related disease with a low survival rate. It shares many symptoms with ordinary diarrhea, and because of this it is often overdiagnosed or misdiagnosed. Many hamsters with diarrhea are mistakenly diagnosed to have wet tail. However, the big difference between the two diseases is that diarrhea is much easier to treat and has a higher rate of survival. PI is nicknamed wet tail because sufferers have very loose feces, which often becomes stuck to the fur around the anus and tail, making it look dirty and wet. PI is caused when a hamster comes into oral contact with the bacteria Lorzonia intracellularis, which is found in feces. It may be contracted through food or water contaminated with the bacteria. Lorzonia intracellularis is not a rare bacteria in hamsters, and most will come into contact with it many times throughout their life with no negative consequences. The bacteria only becomes a threat when the hamster's immune system is compromised by illness or stress. If the immune system is weakened in any way, the hamster can easily fall victim to PI. Stress and weakened immunity can be caused by several factors, including weaning, long-distance traveling, sudden environmental changes, overcrowded housing, surgery, illness, death of a cage mate, and sudden dietary changes. When you first bring a hamster home, it's important to give it several days with no human contact so it can settle into its new surroundings. This is one of the most stressful times in a hamster's life, and newly purchased hamsters are at the highest risk for developing PI. Keeping them in a quiet room with little disruption for a minimum of three days will dramatically reduce their risk. Though PI has a low survival rate, if caught early enough it can be cured. It's important to know the symptoms of PI so you can spot them as soon as they show. As hamsters are prey animals, they will hide symptoms of illness, often until it's too late. Once symptoms of PI begin to show, many hamsters will pass away within 48 hours, so it's vital that you seek out a vet as soon as symptoms arise. Remember that having just one or two of these symptoms does not mean your hamster has PI. However, if you are concerned that your hamster has developed it, you should not hesitate to take them to a vet. Symptoms of PI include, but are not limited to, lethargy, loss of appetite, failure to groom, excessively watery diarrhea, dehydration, dull sunken eyes, irritability, hunched posture while sitting or walking, abdominal discomfort, protruding rectum from constant straining, and in very serious cases, blood in the stool or around the anus. PI is classified as an emergency illness and you can use the emergency vet service to get treatment at any time of day or night, whether the vet surgery is open or closed. Ask your local vet to provide you with their emergency number just in case. PI cannot be treated at home as it requires medical care and often three different methods of treatment. The first treatment is a course of antibiotics, usually Batril, that your hamster will have to take for a couple of weeks. The second treatment is an anti-diarrhea medication. And the third treatment is an injection of fluids to combat the dehydration. For most hamsters who die from PI or diarrhea, the cause of death is usually dehydration, so this is one of the most important treatments. When you bring your hamster home after treatment, it will need to be kept in a warm, clean environment. It's a good idea to keep your hamster in an easy-to-clean travel or hospital cage while it's receiving treatment. The sick hamster must be kept away from all other hamsters in the home, as PI is highly contagious. You should also take steps to thoroughly disinfect the sick hamster's main cage. All bedding, substrate, food and water must be removed and disposed of safely. The cage and all toys should be bleached clean. If there are any toys that are unable to be bleached, for example natural style wooden toys, these will need to be disposed of. While your hamster is in its hospital cage, you should clean it out every few days to help with the recovery. All feces and soiled substrate should be removed as soon as you see it. All uneaten food should be removed and replaced daily, and the water bottle should also be emptied, cleaned and refilled daily. 
Once your hamster has fully recovered and has been free of PI symptoms for at least one week, then it can be returned to its normal cage. It's impossible to protect our hamsters 100% from PI, but there are some things you can do to reduce their risk. Don't stress your new hamster during the period that he is adjusting to his new environment. Limit contact and handling, and keep him on the same food he was eating before purchase until he's comfortable in his new home. Ask staff about PI or wet tail before purchasing or adopting your hamster. Be sure that there have been no recent cases of the disease in any of their hamsters in the last two weeks. Don't just take the staff member's word for it if they say there have been no symptoms. Closely observe the behaviour of the hamsters before picking one out. If it appears that one of the hamsters in the cage has PI, avoid getting your hamster from that location. If possible, make several trips to the rescue centre or pet store before picking out a hamster to observe the cage conditions. If the cage isn't cleaned regularly or if it's overcrowded, your chances of bringing home a sick hamster increase. If possible, quarantine the new hamster for two weeks in a room away from other animals to make sure they are disease free. Spot clean the hamster's cage every two to three days. Although full cleanouts are not necessary more than once every two weeks, spot cleaning to remove feces and soiled substrate as it appears will help to reduce the risk and will keep the cage cleaner for longer. So that is all the basic information you need to know about proliferative ileitis or wet tail. If you would like some more information, I have provided links beneath this video that may be helpful. Remember, if you are concerned for your hamster's health or well-being in any way whatsoever, you should seek out the advice of a qualified vet. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!